So now you step on the scale and yesterday was a shit show. Talk to me. What's the self-talk? I'd be like, what a stupid head. I shouldn't have done what I did yesterday. Yeah, don't you love I that? I can't do that ever again. And then we do it again like next yeah, Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on, people. We are like the biggest repeaters on the... This is what I want you guys to think about. When I say rewrite your movie or rewrite your book or rewrite your story, you guys hear that all the time. It's been used forever. Christine is a writer. You know that. Walt, you write for papers. You know that. Amy, yeah, you get that. When I say that, I want you to think back here of a library. Okay, this is a library, all sorts of genres. Well, guess what? In that library is also a lane that has your name on it. In that lane, however old you are, is a shit ton of movies and a shit ton of books. Now I'm gonna challenge you that you would not walk down that lane and pick up that same book and read that same chapter over and over. When it comes to your wellness journey, you're opening the same book, reading the same chapter, putting it up, and you go off to your life, you come back, oh, that's the same book. And you open, you guys gotta stop that. You gotta stop reading the same 79 pages of your life. Let's go to chapter two. Let's go, let's write a sequel. Jesus, let's become Aquaman. Stop. <laughs> so I want you to picture that. That's how serious it is, Walt. You got in your car. It's an effort for you. You don't want to do this anymore. I made you go out public. You get to the library. I guess there's still libraries today. Who the hell know? Are there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, you, go to, <laughs> you go to the library and you walk in. You're like, where's the Walt section? Picture this. Where's the Walt section? Can I help you? No, I got it. Same goddamn thing. You know, okay. It's like reading your grandchild the same book over and over. You're like, Peter Rabbit, Peter Rabbit, Peter Rabbit. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> okay. All right. So I want you to think about that because we're going to rewrite some of this stuff and you have to be used to it. Baby steps. You're going to hear me say this over and over. So there are going to be times that I'm going to tell you to crawl, walk, run. That's going to simulate. Let's take some baby steps. Hover. That's going to maybe say, sometimes I'm going to say leap. You know, you got to jump. You got to be okay. I'm going to catch you. We're going to each catch each other. Somebody's going to hit you guys up in Messenger and say, you know what? Oh my God. Walt, freaking ass, man, dude. I saw this at 2 a.m. on replay. What you said rang home to me. And I'm telling you right now, you guys, it's your baby step and your crawl is going to mean something to somebody. Yeah? Are you in a baby step or a leap right now for your personality? What do you think? Baby step. Baby, baby step. step. Walt? Baby step. That's the biggest line of bullshit for all of you. I know how to leap. <laughs> biggest I'm crap of goddamn bull bullshit. What? I know how to leap. I just have forgotten how. No, you go. Did you hear oh. that? Well, you of all three people in here leaped into being on this show. Okay. Oh, so I have to convince you? Do we need to go back? <laughs> I, was, I was thinking more in a specific term, but you're right. In that part, yes. But, but that's kind of the example, right? Is that we're going to have to baby step and there's times we're going to have to leap. Because if you were to baby step, you guys, this is the thing that we want to think about. Sometimes when baby steppers wait too long, it passes. You know you QVC shoppers at 2 a.m. If you didn't buy that shit at six o'clock, you're fine. Oh, girl, let me give you a kiss. That is good. Whoa, that one's got it. Whoa, I fell on my booty. 6 a.m., you're like, whew, didn't buy that elliptical machine again, right? <laughs> so sometimes baby step, sometimes leap. All right, what are your thoughts so far? Tell me, tell me what you're thinking. I don't want to get cooked in a squat, and I feel like that's what's happening right now. Cooked in a squat? Yeah, like a biscuit that doesn't rise, you know? Oh, I thought you were saying, like, Peggy, if you make me do 50 squats, I'm going to no. get stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. in the I've squat. I've never heard you know, that term. It's yeah. an old Zig Ziglar thing. It's like a biscuit that doesn't rise gets cooked in a squat. Well, other biscuits all rise around him, but one doesn't, and he's cooked in the squat, and he's shorter and smaller than everybody else. See? I learn something every day from y'all, from, from my squad. All right, I don't want to get caught in a squat. Cooked in a squat. 
I don't want to get cooked in a squat, which is different. Okay, very, very good, very good. All right, promises and commitments. I'm almost done with all my lecturing. I want everybody to just understand where we come from in this group, right? So that when they do their own group or they reach out to you guys and you become mentors and leaders, then they need to understand that the biggest commitments, it's integrity. Please keep the promises at least to yourself. Okay, I said that a little bit earlier. What I'm asking, though, the best way to keep promises to yourself is to make them reasonable and attainable. On my dime, do not set the bar so high, like an Olympic jumper, that it's 12 feet when you're only ready for five and keep missing it. I'm not that girl for you. I am the girl where you hit it at five and master it, hit it at six and master it. I am about shooting high, but not unattainable. I need some help. I'm so frustrated. I am a lost soul at the moment and I see no good things coming anywhere down the pike. Since Stephanie died in May, I was holding it together okay, but the last four months or so have just been hell. I have lost track of me. I've lost track of me in every aspect of my life, my work, my relationships, <laughs> myself. I don't even know who I am anymore. I'm falling into so many old bad habits. I can't seem to get out of it. I, I don't even know what to say. I am just lost and I see nothing turning around. I don't even know how to do it anymore. I need some help. I need some coaching. I need to get my life back in order. I need to get back on track. I've lost every reason of my own why. I don't even know what why means anymore. I'm so fucked up. I need help. Um, I don't. I don't want to fail. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm nervous about public being public. I expressed that to you. Um, yeah, scary. I never. I'm excited at the same time. Like as we started this today, my heart rate. I could just feel my heart rate just booming, just sitting down and starting this because yeah. I'm not a quick guy. You know that about me. It may not be pretty. It may not be fun. But I will not yeah. quit. No, I may no. fail, but I will not quit. Um, and I just, I was on such a damn roll for almost a year until shit went sideways in March. And I, I can't believe I can't figure my way back to that. I'm trying to figure out how I got to the point where I'm sitting right here. Um, I, I've had a couple of big, this will probably be the third big life changing moment I will have. Um, the first one was DBC back in Denver way back when. And so that and that was a boot camp, just so everybody knows. You went to a, 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 a destination boot camp. Yep. Where I learned an awful lot about health and nutrition and made some huge changes in my life. And then in 2017, I, I got really sick with an infection that changed everything for me. Um, and through that, I, I, I reevaluated everything in my life because I was very lucky to survive and fixed my relationships, especially with my wife, and everything was on a whole different level, and I have been on a roll since then. And I didn't do anything to ask for this. You know, March 9th, every, my world changed. Um, my job stopped, um, everything. I've built two companies over the last 20 years that are, I think, very successful, and it's all been taken away from me. My wife was very sick, and, um, a week after the last day I worked, March 9th, they told her she needed to get surgery, but she couldn't because no elective surgeries were allowed. We had to wait till May 1st, the first day, and without making a long story, there were some complications and she passed away. And In June of this past year, yeah. May 16th, yeah. May 16th, okay. And I feel like I've lost everything in my life. I know. So I have no job. I have lost my best friend and I have to get through every day without her. I know, honey. I was identified with my, my job, made me feel worth it. Yes. My job brings a lot of joy to other people sometimes and that's a big thing for me. And I, I, f I don't feel like I'm worth anything and I'm embarrassed that I can't get out of it. I can't get out of this funk. I need some help and that's why I'm here. And I am, I'm an ass kicker, and I, right now I feel like the ass is kicking me. So. 
Yeah, I'm so proud of you. I mean, you know, I, I can't imagine, and I'm, I'm not ever, you guys are never going to find from me somebody who says, I understand. Because when I don't understand, I will tell you I don't understand. And I don't understand what you're going through. I can tell you I'm compassionate to you and I feel for you what you have gone through. And I can tell you that for you to step up before destroying yourself is amazing. Amazing. And ass kicking. And... You are worth it. You are not broken. And you're going to come out of this because guess what? Because she believes in you. And you don't build two businesses that kick butt, that go down because of COVID, because we're all suffering with COVID. Unfortunately, those are that's one thing that brings us together for seven Gs. But I'll tell you, you don't do what you did, buddy. You know I told you to bring your damn tissues, did you? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Do what, you, do what your mama told you not to. But you know you built those businesses and you know you can again. And you know sometimes with adversity, it's because you're supposed to take a different path and you wouldn't have because it was a comfort zone. And you're on a path that felt good and maybe complacent. And if you just sit in it and we give you some sort of confidence and maybe a new light, a new relationship, a collaboration will find you. That's what I'm projecting is going to happen, Walt, with you. And I, I'm projecting it with Amy as well. And I'm projecting with Christine that she's going to get a kid's book. She's going to get some sort of book, romance novel. This can only happen in my life. So how much TV do you watch? Oh, I watch about 80 hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't take me, make me turn it off because it's my best friend. Oh, we're here. We're doing all this. What's that sound, Amy? Music. No oh, shit. It's still sound. Oh, you, you. I love you, but Jesus. Okay. It's true. I wasn't watching music. I listened. To music but we don't have any calm mental muscle which is where the emotions are going to stir up which is where you're going to oh she doesn't like it stop she's messing everybody's elevator speech up she just fucked it all up amy now you have to go first elevator speech hi blah 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 i have to listen to something because if i don't that was I what you thought about for 90 seconds before matt damon was on no. What did you think about before? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> what were you thinking about when you went through your nine, your nine senses, your five senses? Bring it. I just want to do all kinds of things, but I don't know where to start. I don't know how to start. And I guess that's where you come in. At least that's what LaDawn explained. Um, this is the last day of the year. So I figured I would send it today because tomorrow is a new year a new start and I'd like to just get moving on this I want to take care of me I want to get healthy and of course getting healthy would help me lose weight and get my medical conditions under control hopefully and I'm just all excited to start I thought about Everything I've done in the past, I've always done everything to make somebody happy. Um, my mom used to call me Maytag because I'm reliable. Yeah, um, I'm dependable. And I've been referred to as Dear Amy, like Dear Abby. Wow, this is good. No, this is good. This is good. Um, if you have a problem, you run to Amy because she's going to tell you up front and not mince any words and, and tell you like it is. I run an in-home daycare for preschool and underage children. I got done my career probably when my son was in the second grade and became a home daycare provider so that I could homeschool him. I now homeschool my grandchildren because of the whole corona thing. I have other teenagers that come to my home to do their remote work. I enjoy riding, um, motorcycling, being outdoors if it's warm. I do not like cold, I don't like snow, and I live in central New Hampshire. Go figure. I really would like to start working on me 
I give, give, give. Now I want to work on me. I want to be able to write. I want to be able to use more of my artistic side. I need to get my Aquaman back in. <laughs> yes! <laughs> woo oh, woo! Okay. All right, go ahead, girlfriend. Okay. Let's go. I was thinking about, it seems like the the year started to go crazy in March. Yes. Walt was saying, and, and maybe he put that thought in my head because I just thought, he's so right. They had a wonderful home daycare with little preschool children. And then all of a sudden I'm slammed with ages, second grade to 10th grade, remote learners with my preschoolers. Wow. Um, it, you can't go out in public because people are just crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the grocery store is a nightmare. Yeah. Um, so how I felt this morning was like, oh, good Lord, I'm just adding to the nightmare. Even my watch told me. You need a breathing exercise. <laughs> right, right. And the reason I took you back is because if we don't go back, we can't go forward. And you will find so many people that maybe you've already talked to to help you in a journey that will tell you, don't go back. Today is a new day. Start today. Um, let me find it. That's my bullshit button because we have to go back and figure out what we can rewire because there's a, if we don't go back there's a lot of stuff we did well back there and the stuff that we did well we need to keep dusted off and keep moving forward insanity happens when we do the same shit so don't we want to go back and see what the same stuff is when people call me they don't call me when they're like man i'm doing so awesome like like totally awesome peggy i just am nailing it no they call me when what they need some help when they call me, what do they say? They tell me the same thing they told me before or on every other journey, they come back and go, I wanna get on a nutrition plan or move. I'm like, how'd that go for you? Maybe there's some other shit we could work on like habits and sleep and stress and self-care and relationships and organization and should I keep going, faith, purpose, all of that stuff. That then helps you eat well move more and not repeat your stuff. So we are going to have to go back. We will dig up some of that. There are a lot of nuggets in there. So when we go back though, Walt, this is gonna be, you know, I know you're in a very raw, sensitive place. I'm gonna ask you when we do go back, I'm not asking you to not go back to the rawness of, you know, your wife and all that stuff. What I'm asking you guys is more of, if I were to say as an example today, what would be the thing you keep repeating over and over and over that put you in your chair where you are today talking to me? Because it's something you do really, really well because you've done it so much to put your ass in the chair to talk to me. Today. I know the answer to that for me. What is it? Forget that I matter. Yeah. Self-confidence, self, yeah, that's. Dude, and you know what? You're going to find out there's some yucky feely stuff back there. It's, it happens usually between age four and seven. That's somewhere along the line. It could be a parent, aunt, uncle, gym teacher sometimes, first grade embarrassment, something where someone either repetitively or you really respect made you feel lesser than. It could be an older sibling and it got embedded enough with some sort of level of a little bit of insecurity, insecurity where you put it on repeat. That's your movie, right? Mm, I'm not worth and then what do we do we get into relationships through our teens and our 20s and we find people to just reiterate that to us so that's how honest and awesome we are two of your best strengths sit in it for a second give yourself a pat on the back what do you this is not a perfect I'm not grading you Okay, I'm not grading you. Um, what would I say if I started? Not that anybody cares, um, but I would say maybe my strength is moderation. I do a really good job on moderating my food, moder except for work, but most time moderation. And I would say I'm really good right now on sleeping. So those would be my strengths. Christine, what would be two strengths you have right now? Two strengths right now. I actually am in the good part of sleeping. Okay. I go to bed regularly at the same time. Perfect. Okay. What's one more? Oh, God, I have to come up with you. Oh, my God. I know, huh? My yeah. other strength, 
I, I put it on my intake form. We, we always, I always pay myself first with my money. Instead of this, it's this. I love that. <laughs> so we put, I put it in my savings or retirement and then pay my bills. That is one of my bills. Love you. So <laughs> no, even if it's 25 cents, that mentality, that self-worth step is huge. And I'm going to chat with you guys just real quickly when we get towards, you know, the end here about my wellness wheel and finance is one of them. Because you guys know finance is a big deal. We need it. That's our monetary compensation and it's compensation for what? Doing a good job. <laughs> right? So we got to do something for this cash because nobody else is going to just show up and pay our bills. At least I haven't in my life. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> Amazon ain't bringing me no money. Okay, well, two strengths you have. Stop. Organization. Yes. Sorry. Organization and determination. Yeah, you are an organized guy. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on in your desk back there. What is that shit? Okay, so do we have a, what's that? A thermos? Because you are really organized. So that, if I were to ask you. That's a lens. Lens. It is. That's a honker. Nice work, buddy. Oh, good. Well, with this week's little commitment, the organization, because you know I'll have you take pictures of it, so, mm-hmm. Amy, two, you've had some time to think. Two strengths. Tell me, girlfriend. I'm going to say I'm organized. I'm pretty organized. Um, I keep a filing system. Nice. Um, let's see. As far as the second strength goes, um, I tend to my kitties a lot. They like to be taken care of by me, I think. Oh, yeah. There's that take care of everybody else thing. Watch yeah. the theme with that one down in the corner. <laughs> but you know what you guys have also done, which we will get into. You know, it's very, I expressed this to you when I first met you. It's very important for me to know your chronotype, which is Dr. Bruce's work with your sleep cycle. And that's, we will be talking about that. It's a big difference on how cortisol works with you and your love languages and how you learn and left brain, right brain. So when I say she has a little bit of acts of service and helping others, what we're going to do with Amy and the rest of you is teach you how to turn that love language back on yourself because you do your love language because it feels good, right? But we are taught to do that love language for others. And then we give and we give and we give. And then what happens? We either get sick or pissed off. Or we blame them. I do everything for you. Well, that's because you started out that way. Not my problem. <laughs> now the cats expect it. And then you blame them. Oh, my cats are so needy. They are. Yeah, you <laughs> brought them out to treat you. Are you not paying attention? Lord, I can't, I'm, I'm serious. Okay. Think about hopping on a journey for six weeks and just nailing it. I'm not asking you to get an A+. Plus. That's not what I want. I'm asking you if we could get a positive and consistent B along the way, which means some things you're doing, you are getting an F. I get Fs. We all get Fs, right? Fs might be that I don't talk to Dana deeply for weeks. That's my F, okay? So I'm not asking you to come from an F all the way up to an A. And I'm also not asking you to take your A down to an F. I'm talking about meeting me there, and I'm talking about getting a B for six weeks. Wouldn't that be amazing? Then this A and F thing, which is what the hell you're doing. So we're going to stop that. We're, gonna, we're done. So Christine, tell me two areas that if you could improve, magic wand, like what do you need? Top two things that you're like, mm. Saying no. Love that. Um, another one I'd improve. I have so many. <laughs> <laughs> bad habits you always talk about getting on the trail for the good habits um i do try to do that but my bad habits can take over the same way as my good habits so if i slip off the bandwagon we'll say and have that piece of cake that you allow yourself to treat yourself with it would be a nanosecond before i ate the whole cake well two things that you yours was too much time maybe, right? Or, or wasted time. What would you say the other one was? Sleep. Yeah, so yeah, sleep and motivation. I love, okay. You know motivation doesn't come in the mail. I know. It'd be nice if we could get it off Amazon. It would be prime, no delivery fee. 
and then <laughs> we could return it if it didn't work. So if, if motivation doesn't come to you, honestly, the best way to stay motivated is we have to have some sort of action, right? Even a baby action. So if you hear me say to you, if you, it sounds weird, but if you start sweeping the kitchen, that often will lead into something else that will lead into something else that maybe then you're motivated to walk to the mailbox, which you wouldn't have walked to the mailbox if you were waiting to get motivated. Sweeping floor equals go to the mailbox. It's like, right? Weird. Two areas of improvement for you. I'm coming back around. We've had this question before. Has it changed? Amy. Um, learning not to give up all my time to everybody, everything. See, it's already changed. Gorgeous. Okay. Yeah. Second. I need to learn to put me first. You know what? I'll tell you. Once you do that, bossy bitch. Well, you guys, when you're walking up a mountain, think about this metaphor when you guys are struggling this week. When you're walking up a mountain and it's high and you have every intention to get up there and you stumble and you fall and your knees start bleeding, very few people will go, you know, I'm going to go back down to the bottom and, 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 and I'm just going to start over. Right? Very few people. Most of the time people fall is because of what? They took their mind off the game. And the mind off the game fell off because the body did. Because if the body wouldn't be going, Oh my God, this hill is big. I'm a loser. That's when your ass falls. If you're up going, Jesus, same words. This is a big ass mountain, man. Woo, I'm a loser. It's even different, right? So when you become bossy, what I'm meaning by that, by not giving your time and everything to everybody else, you will fall down less. You will fall down less. And instead of going valley and peaks, that bipolar of wellness, you're going to do this. It's easier to recover. You'll lose that 50 pounds and you'll lose another 50 or however many, 20 and 20 or 10 and 10, but you won't have to keep losing the same 10. Okay, real quickly. All right, so here's my wellness wheel. You guys know all things wellness and it might just, um, I want to take it out of this just because it's plastic. So. I have a trademark wellness wheel. You guys have seen this before. Okay, it's literally a wheel, and I sit, I use the wheel metaphor because I like to say wellness wagon. When you're on the wagon, things are going great. When they're not going so great, you fall off the wagon because maybe the wheel has a puncture in it. So if you think about a literal nail coming into the wheel, you're going to have a little bit of a flat. In this wheel, which you guys will be working on, and this is on my website, you'll be working on this. There are 24 different areas. And we're going to be doing stuff in all these 20 areas. And I'm going to be asking you, hey, if way out here you're doing awesome on, say, exercise, you'd be way out here towards the end doing amazing. If it's sucking, you're going to be kind of in here, right? The reason we want it out here is what? The bigger the wheel is? Yeah. Right, right Walt? Yeah, look at you. Look at you holding up this wheel a year from now and saying, shut up, I don't go take any excuses. Sit up tall. <laughs> we are not here to go coddle people to pull us backwards, okay? So that means integrity. If you even have to come clean because you weren't clean, okay? Because we lie to ourselves. There's a book back there about lying. Okay, you're gonna love this. Then we're gonna do something on relationships. What's the relationship thing going to be? Going to be a letter or phone call or an email to someone you have to heal a little bit about, a little bit with, that's important to you. Doesn't mean that the relationship has to be healed and beautiful moving forward. It could be something like this. Maybe you have a tainted relationship a little bit from an ex-employer and you're just like, you know what, maybe Walt, Jason, he was a good guy. Man, we used to laugh at the bar. We used to have a good time at the bar. Kind of had this falling out over gambling about whatever. And I'm going to reach out to him and I'm just going to send him an email or a letter that just whatever that said text that says, you know what, bud, I was just thinking about some of those good times we had. And man, I was just thinking about you. 
That's it. You don't have to, no big ding, no nope, nothing. We just got to get rid of all this weight and yucky backpack crap you're carrying around. Okay, so it's going to be a relationship thing. All right, mindset. Mindset's another quadrant. We're going to time management. Sorry, Amy. All right, real world is about you guys. You guys know what your real world is. So I don't give commitments. We don't make commitments with each other that's straight across the board. Just like if you guys want to lose 20 pounds, and this one wants to lose 80, I'm not going to say lose 10 pounds this week. So Amy, what, why do you think I'm doing that? What, what, why do you think I'm doing that? To make me get up and motivate me a little bit to do something other than sit on my butt and watch TV. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, down the road, you might run out of excuses when you say you're too busy or you don't have enough time to do blank. You're going to find some other things, hopefully that are a little bit healthy to do. Then we're going to come to nutrition. I want you guys to think about this. I want you to look in your cabinets. We need to do a little bit of an audit this week. And I need you to try to get some of the things out. I'm not telling you to do a big trash can. You'll hear other people say that, pulling the trash can, get rid of shit that causes binging. We're not doing that this week. I want you to get rid of the things that are super unhealthy. You look at those chemicals, you look at anything that's really high in sodium, you got to get rid of it. Okay. The last thing that I want you to think about is this week, the reason that we do baselines, you know, we did baselines on your circumference measurements all over so that we can celebrate. If the scale doesn't move, we can say, Hey, look, but your waist went down an inch and we can be super excited about that. One reason we do baselines is also strength. So you can say, Hey, I did four pushups on my knees or against the wall. Now I can do 10. I told you I'm coming at your ass because you got me, you got each other, there's no excuses, this is all about you guys, nobody's getting paid, I'm not getting paid, you're not getting paid, so there's no excuse there, I paid a lot of money and it was worthless shit, no, no, you showed up, I showed up because we care about each other and you're going to get the job done, problem? No. no, no, coach, we don't have a problem, all right, I love you, mean it, this has been fan freaking tastic you guys did great um go do you and reach out reach out to all your people and just know you're making a difference in your life and other people's lives and i'll see you on the flip side over in mark zuckerberg's other land <laughs> Heidi Wilms and if you are interested in being a cast member on season two or would love to nominate somebody go to www.peggywilms.com you can also find information there to work with me or also to be a part of the Coach Peggy real-time groups we're going to have groups then what does that mean it just means that you don't have to go transparent in public in real time but we're going to treat you exactly the same in large group virtual settings so go over and find out more about that also hop on to coach peggy real time community on facebook because we are interacting with you and we want to hear your stories and you are going to want to be part of the family so we will see you there